Good day, everyone. I am Ms. Mariani Arvargas, APLA teacher. In this video, I will discuss the lesson one of dressmaking for grade 7 or grade 8, identifying sewing tools and equipment and their uses. First, let's have the content standards, performance standards, and the most essential learning competences of this topic. First, the content standards. Content standards. The learner demonstrates understanding in the use of sewing tools in dressmaking. Performance standards. The learner independently uses tools in dressmaking or tailoring. Most essential learning competencies. Identify sewing tools and equipment. Classify sewing machines and select appropriate measuring tools. So, let's proceed. Again, Lesson 1, Identifying Sewing Tools and Equipment and Their Uses. Sewing tools are those which don't require the use of electricity. There are tools that are used manually by hand, and there are also sewing equipment that would be heavy items such as sewing machine itself. At this point, let's talk about the different measuring tools. So we have seven measuring tools to be enumerated, and they are as follows. One, L square. Two, tape measure. Three, yardstick. Four, ruler. Five, seam gauge. Six, hip curve. And seven, French curve. L square. It divides the garment into the desired measurement. It is perfect squares and is useful in making straight lines and numbers. Tape measure. It is used in taking body measurements. Fiberglass tape is commonly used by professional dressmakers. 3. Yardstick. It is used for general marking and for measuring fabric grain line when laying out the pattern. 4. Ruler. It is used for general marking. It aids in connecting lines. 5. Seam gauge. This measuring tool helps make quick, accurate measurements for hems, buttonholes, scallops, and pleats. 6. Hip curve. This tool is used in connecting and shaping curve points. And lastly, French curve. This is used to shape the depth of the neck hole and armhole of the pattern. So once again, the different measuring tools are L-square, tape measure, yardstick, ruler, seam gauge, hip curve, and French curve. Next are the cutting tools. So we have 10 cutting tools to be discussed. First is the trimming scissors. Next is the cutting shears. 3. Seam reaper. 4. Pinking shears or scalloping shears. 5. Thread clipper, 6. Stitch reaper, 7. Embroidery scissor, 8. Leather shears, 9. Rotary cutter, and 10. The bent handle dressmaker shears. For the trimming scissors, it is 5 to 6 inches long, which are used for clipping threads. Cutting shears. These are made of equally steel and hold a sharp cutting edge. Shears have the length of 7 to 12 inches and are satisfactory for most apparel fabrics. 3. Seam Reaper. It hook quickly rips seams, opens buttonholes, and removes stitches. So this should be used carefully to avoid piercing the fabric. 4. Pinking Shears or the Scalloping Shears. This is popular in zigzagging or scallop edge or for seam finishes. This is used to finish seams and draw edges or many types of fabric. 5. Thread Clipper. It is used for snipping threads. 6. Stitch Reaper. This is smaller than seam reaper and it can cut stitches close to the fabric. 7. Embroidery Scissor. It has 4 to 5 inches finely tapered blades. Both points are sharp for use in working with fine details in delicate fabrics and in embroidery work. 8. Leather shears. 
These are used for cutting leather and sewing. It has heavy serrated edge. 9. Rotary Cutter It is an adaptation of the giant rotary cutter used by the garment industry. It works like a pizza cutter and can be used by left or right-handed sewers. The rotary cutter is available in different sizes with different blades. When using a rotary cutter, work on a cutting mat to protect the blade and the cutting surface. And lastly, the bent handle dressmaker shears, so these are made of quality steel and hold a sharp cutting edge. The blades move easily and cut smoothly along the entire length and the points should come together. Shears have the length of 7 to 12 inches and are satisfactory for most apparel fabrics. So once again, our cutting tools are trimming scissors, cutting shears, seam reaper, pinking shears or scalloping shears, thread clipper, stitch reaper, embroidery scissor, leather shears, rotary cutter, and a bent handled dressmaker's shears. Next, let's talk about the different marking tools. So we have five different marking tools and they are the following. Taylor's chalk. Two, dressmaker's pencil. Three, tracing wheel. Four, dressmaker's carbon paper. And five, liquid marking pen. First is the tailor's chalk. So this is essential as a marker for use on materials. Taylor's chalk is available in a range of colors and is removed by brushing. Second, the dressmaker's pencil. This is available in white or pastel shades. This chalk pencil is used to make fine lines on fabric. It has an erasing brush at one end. 3. Tracing wheel. It is a soft suit with a sharp point. This tool is used to transfer pattern markings to the wrong side of the fabric. This is used with a car with a dressmaker's carbon paper. Four, dressmaker's carbon paper. So this type of tracing paper is available in a number of colors, including white, red, and blue. It is used in marking all types of fabric in combination with a tracing wheel. So this work is best on plain flat surface fabrics. And lastly, the liquid marking pen. So this is a felt tip liquid marking pen. Marks may disappear after 48 hours and the other washes out. Once again, the different marking tools are tailor's chalk, dressmaker's pencil, tracing wheel, dressmaker's carbon paper, and liquid marking pen. Next, let's have the different sewing tools and we have six. So let's start. First, pins. Two, pin cushion. Three, thimble. Four, sewing needle threader. Five, sewing machine needle. And six, hand needle. Pins. So they hold pattern pieces in place. Anchor seam allowances as you sew, fit fabric on the body, and secure all sorts of spearmint trims, delicate sequins, and minuscule beads. 2. Pin cushion. It is used to keep pins and needles when not in use. 3. Thimble. A small, hard pitted cup worn for protection on the finger that pushes the needle in sewing. 4. Sewing needle threader. It aids in putting the thread to the needle. 5. Sewing machine needle. Sewing machine needles are graded according to diameter and length. And the system of sewing machine needle sizes, the needles for the 96 to 87 machine are of a class and variety known as 16 by 231 and are furnished in sizes 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, and 23. And lastly, the hand needle. It is used for hand sewing. 
It is a long slender tool with a pointed tip at one end and a hole or eye at the other. So once again, the different sewing tools are pins, pin cashon, thimble, sewing needle threader, sewing machine needle, and lastly, the hand needle. At this juncture, we will discuss the classification of sewing machine based on machine type. So, we have A. So, let's start. Once again, the classification of sewing machine based on machine type. Lock stitch sewing machine. High speed lock stitch sewing machine. Over edging machine. Embroidery machine. Button holder machine. Button attachment machine. Double needle machine and board packing machine. So for the lock stitch sewing machine, so this is usually used in homes and sometimes in school and also called domestic sewing machine. It is run by foot and may also be converted to electric power machine. Two, high speed lock stitch sewing machine. So this is sometimes called a straight stitching machine or industrial sewing machine. It has automatic lubrication and is used by tailors or dressmakers. 3. Overedging machine. Other companies call it a small machine. It finishes the raw edges of the pattern for construction. 4. Embroidery machine. So this is used in making fancy stitches and in making different kinds of embroidery stitches on fabrics for the Barong Tagalog, pillowcases, linen, and other novelty items. 5. Button Holder Machine So this is used in making button holes on garments. 6. Button Attachment Machine So this is used in attaching buttons to the garments. 7. Double Needle Machine so this is used in the construction of the different kinds of clothing, especially for the inseam, outseam, and side seam. And lastly, the bar tacking machine. So this is used in reinforcing the opening and closing of pockets and plackets of garments. So once again, the different classification of sewing machine based on machine type are lock stitch sewing machine, high speed lock stitch sewing machine, over-edging machine, embroidery machine, button holder machine, button attachment machine, double needle machine, and bar packing machine. At this moment, let's talk about the two major parts of a lock stitch sewing machine. The two major parts of the lock stitch sewing machine are upper parts and lower parts. The upper part is composed of head, arm, and bed. Head is the complete sewing machine without a cabinet or stand. Arm is the curved part of the head containing mechanism for operating the needle. And bed is the flat portion of the machine and beneath is the feed dog where it is mounted and the shuttle and lower tread are placed. By the way, sewing machine is a machine used to sew fabric and materials together with thread. It was invented during the first industrial revolution to decrease the amount of manual sewing. Sewing machine was created on September 10, 1846. Now, let's talk about the parts of the sewing machine in the arm. First is pull pin. It is the thread holder. 2. Thread guide. It keeps the thread in position. 3. Thread take up lever. It releases the thread and interlocks with a bobbin thread. 4. Pressure bar lifter. It moves the pressure foot high. 5. Tension. It controls the looseness and tightness of stitches. 6. Needle bar. It holds the needle in place. 7. Needle plump. It holds and tightens the needle. 8. Pressure foot. It holds the fabric in place while sewing. 9. 
needle. It is a slender tool attached in the needle clamp used for sewing. 10. Bobbin Winder. It controls the bobbin while winding thread. 11. A stitch Regulator. It checks the length of the stitches. 12. Balance Wheel. It sets the mechanism in motion. 13. Belt. It connects the balance wheel to the drive wheel. And lastly, a stop motion screw. It hinders moving when loosened and starts moving when tightened. And lastly, the parts of the sewing machine under the bed. First, feed dog. It moves the fabric while sewing. Two, throat plate. It is the windows of the feed dog and it is where the bobbin threads come out. Three, a slide plate. It is a movable plate that covers the shuttle and bobbin case. Four, shuttle. It holds the bobbin case while sewing. Five, bobbin. It is a metal spool for winding thread. And lastly, the bobbin case. It holds the bobbin. So, that's it. Once again, we discussed the lesson one for dressmaking for grade seven or grade eight, identifying sewing tools and equipment and their uses. I hope you learned something. Once again, I am Miss Mariani Arvargas, a PLA teacher. Thank you so much and happy learning.